topic why we are here, I think. So, welcome everybody. First, I would like to, to introduce myself a little bit. Anastasia is uh, Thomas because I know him since, I don't know, something like 20 years or 17 years. And I had been many times in Klappenhof with the uh, OP and with Medallo team. But, uh, but okay, I hope he will arrive, maybe jump in the middle. So my name is, uh, official name is Mrs. Timi Akish Lukasik, but uh, everyone calls me Kirchi or Timi here in Megalo. And uh, it's a long story why, why I have my nickname. But uh, I think in my introduction it's important to mention that uh, Megalo is a very, very big part of my life, I can say. I identify myself as a recovered uh, drug addict. I had been in uh, Leo Amici Foundation from 1997 in therapy, almost for two years, 22 months. So I was, I was not an easy case, probably. <laughs> I had a long therapy uh, as an uh, opiate user, mainly. So it was very, very, very long time ago, let's say. 1997, and then uh, when I finished my, my therapy and I moved back to my hometown, later I came to Budapest, uh, I found, or it's interesting destiny, I can say Megalo found me, or those people who established the Megalo Foundation, they asked me if uh, I would like to join the, the drama group, the theater therapy group, what you had on your skin and on your body experience yesterday, so you know, it's very great that I don't have to explain what is Megalo Theater Therapy because everything I think what started with this and I know that uh, yesterday you got already uh, information from uh, Opie, you call Opie or Peter? Peter, yeah? <laughs> the, but you know if I say yeah, Opie, that Opie is Peter, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> everything started with the theater and when I joined uh, Megalo's world and it was just an idea that uh, those uh, guys who were leading the, the theater therapy group, they just wanted to have some, you know, fresh new other tasks. So they asked me, because they knew me from the rehab, and they knew that I liked very much the, the drama method, so they asked me if I want to try to this kind of work here. Uh, because, you know, uh, something very new, I was afraid, but then uh, I had for one month something like to try how, how it works. And it went well, so I stayed, and it means that from 2004, I uh, was working and employed in Magalo, and uh, three and a half year ago, I moved to this teenage or adolescent rehab from here. You can ask why, it's not a secret. I was just, uh, after this, I don't know, I, I have some dyscalculia, so after this, I don't know, 15 years or something like that, I wanted to, little bit professionally try something new and this this project is about that. I mean this this new situation and tendency. So I it was a hard uh, saying goodbye to Megalo and that's why I didn't say goodbye to Megalo <laughs> and I'm here now again and every week I'm here because of uh, our foreign volunteers as Diego for example I'm mentoring the volunteers and also I'm, I'm joining in every possible way, mainly this international project. So what, why I was invited, and uh, anyway, I, I will come to so speak a little bit about, about this cooperation uh, between Megalo and between this, teen, we call Tini Rehab, Tini Rehab in English, but in Hungarian it's very similar, Tini Rehab. And I would like to introduce uh, a bit the organization. This presentation is not mine, and I prefer, maybe because of the drama, you know, to speak really in a freestyle way, interactive, that you can ask me and these kind of things. But I can show you this uh, presentation. I just put some photos to, to be more interesting. But really, please, uh, uh, I discussed with Dirk that I will ask uh, my boss in the rehab and probably I can send you this presentation and there you will see some, of course, some English text uh, of the basic information because the website is not in English yet, unfortunately. And you know, Google Translator is better to forget. But, uh, but what I think is important that shortly I would like to go through these few slides and then just uh, what I think is more valuable 
that I would like to share with you my own experiences as a social worker there and my own uh, questions even and, uh, and comparing with Magalo what is different there because uh, of course I have my own uh, rehab experience which is you know 23 years ago something then I had this long experience here in, in Magalo and then this new because of the <coughs> the new psychoactive substances we call you know <coughs> shortly designer drugs uh, experience is absolutely something new again so is it fine for you yeah, i don't know how many time i have do i have one uh, frame something one hour one hour see oh good so yeah. we we debate a bit okay so what i think that is it okay for you if uh, i just run through these uh, some sentences and then share a little bit what yes. I experienced, yes. 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 and you know, also ask you ask you about uh, if you have any questions. And really, uh, I would like it to make a bit like a free conversation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, because it's I think a little bit uh, by my boss. This we have, and we will then understand maybe the form is uh, uh, established by the Hungarian Reform Church, and our. Uh, so we have very strong connection with the, uh, we have to have some uh, above us are uh, some, uh, you know, Christian uh, leaders or something like that. And I got this presentation from my boss and in itself the title, what, uh, as you see, Drug Free Methods in Residential Drug Rehabilitation Institute of Young People. I think in itself it's already, I, I, I can say by myself that it's not exactly correct because, uh, because of the, the effects of, of the, how do you call these drugs? That please help me. Do you use this designer drug? Uh, the new psychoactive Yes, but shortly. Yeah. And then yes. half of my presentation will be to say the new psychoactive MPS. 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 So, okay, Just let's say MPS. 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 <laughs> designer drugs, okay. But yeah, so because of the effects, you know very well, maybe more than me, the, the dual diagnosis, double diagnosis things, and uh, that's why, if needed, this rehab gives uh, ma pharma, pharma <coughs> uh, ecological yes, help. <laughs> yes, so we give if they, if someone really needs. We have psychiatrists, of course, psychologists, and, and uh, we, we can give some kind of. Uh, uh, I don't like to say medicines, but let's say, uh, yeah, medical support for a while, uh, if it's needed. So in itself, mm -hmm. I will give feedback to my boss that it's not true that it's drug free, but, uh, sorry, but ma mainly drug free. Okay, so <coughs> it's, of course, I, I mean, obviously, I think uh, developing a, a drug free lifestyle, and it's very funny because when I just read all these things, immediately questions came into my mind also, that if you would like to to show to these young guys, ages uh, you can imagine that officially between from 10 to 19, <coughs> but in, in practice, in, a, in the everyday life, we never had younger client uh, or user than uh, 12 years old, it's 12, yeah? But now, now the people who are there, the young people are from 14 to 19, and uh, what I think is, if we say to them that, hello, this center has a very beautiful aim to have a sober life, and they ask, what does it mean, sobriety? And I think for all of the professionals nowadays, it's a very good question, and I don't want to go deeper, but really, every day I face this uh, situation with the guys, with the youngsters, who they do not, mainly they don't identify themselves as they are uh, young people with addiction problems. What does it mean, addiction? So what kind of addiction, of course, behavior things and the, the substances. So I think uh, it starts like, sometimes I feel that myself like a opera or babysitter, you know, and not at all a social worker or a expert who is working with addicted people since I don't know how long time, because, uh, because these basic questions are, I think, not answered. And it's very good that they ask, I think. So, yeah, I, if I have a flag, of course I will write on this flag that uh, I love sobriety and I like drug-free, I believe in drug-free lifestyle, but I think that it means something else for all the individuals who are there. So, 
all the, I think, and also for the staff members, we, very often when we have supervision, we have to discuss about it. What is the aim? So uh, you can imagine, you know, very well what's going on in a in a rehab, like. Uh, Yeah, this result-oriented result way. Uh, <coughs> for me, it's not the most interesting part. The community life, I mean, because of the previous uh, projects and experiences of Medano and the cooperation between, uh, for example, with Knappenhof or other treatment centers in, uh, in Euro TC, I, am I right that you know quite a lot about the the ways how the rehab centers mainly work, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, I, did, I mean, I, I would like not go uh, to, the, to the theory so deep, but just let's go through that. Yeah, the safe environment, of course, it's very important. I think uh, you should know that the, the Christian background doesn't mean, I mean, there is one thing which is obligatory or the, every Sunday morning when we have a, a little chapel or something like that, Yes, uh, uh, every Sunday there is a um, celeb celebration. Mm -hmm. yes. because mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, mm -hmm. I, me, myself, I, I, I never had a baptism, for example, but I think it's really, you know, that very well that the Protestant uh, uh, celebration is very, I mean, free and we are singing together and it's like a very friendly atmosphere and of course nobody has to be has to be Christian or something like that. Obviously, the center is open for everyone. And uh, so the the basic basic uh, things as everywhere else, the individual uh, uh, case management and also the, the group therapy is <coughs> very, very similar, like in Megalo. And I, I think, not I think, but I know that all around Hungary and every rehab center that the most important even more important than individual therapy is the group, group therapy and the, its uh, elements, as you see. And uh, yeah, it's just I did have to be there that you should, yeah, we have we have very strong medical support. And uh, yes, it's more interesting already because it's also um, like. We are in a brotherhood with Megalo in outdoor activities, which is really, really very important. So every, in, in the teen, teenage we have every summer we have three camps, and one is canoeing, and one is climbing, and the third one is more like, a, but you can just give me a sign if you need any break for questions or something. And the third one is more like a, a mental week, we call it uh, silent week, and then also we are doing hiking and, and trekking, but uh, that is more about some spiritual work. <coughs> and uh, so because of the age of the target group, it's very important uh, that the family is involved. And I don't know if I can say, but I will say, and we will see what will be, that very often I see that uh, the parents and relatives should have therapy somewhere else mm -hmm. and I have <coughs> personally in my own cases I had always more difficult work with the families mm -hmm. or the parents than with the, with the young person mm -hmm. and uh, yes yeah, so the, the family backgrounds are extremely uh, yeah complicated and then I was PC, right? yeah, I think <coughs> yes activity this was already yeah, coming back a little bit to this free time activity, this is interesting because what I also uh, discovered that in Megal already I, I knew very well that uh, to, I will say like for us, because as I said, I identify myself as, a, as an addict or as a sober addict, that uh, the free time and the empty hours or empty time was always very difficult for me. And first time when the first years of my sobriety, I was afraid of the weekends because I was I knew oh I don't have work what I, will I do and you know it very well. So even in a, in this teenage rehab, what I see it's the boring is the biggest enemy or something like that. So what I feel 
For example, we work there like uh, 24 hours and 12 hours in our uh, in our schedule. And when I go home after a 24 hour you know uh, service, I'm like brainwashed mm -hmm. and dead. So always in the next day, I don't I don't have any kind of work or something. I always need and, and uh, maybe my family is the first time was wondering that uh, what happened with me because at night we can sleep. Let's say officially not very much but uh, nothing happens then we can we can fall asleep but i don't know i do not have children but in the rehab i behave like a tiger mother and i <laughs> even if you know in every noises i i wake up so sometimes yes i fall asleep but immediately if i hear anything then i and i i just wake up so uh, i really <coughs> feel on my skin that that these these young guys uh, need really even more than 24 hours attention and uh, 24 hours of emotional care and contact and you know Timmy this Timmy 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 so <laughs> I have this uh, this kind of experience and of course we cannot fill up and I I think we do not have to fill up every minute because we would like to teach as well how to to use the free time because they have a lot of free time and in the rehab they cannot use uh, smartphones they cannot use I mean, internet they can use only half an hour per week, and wow, <laughs> yes, <laughs> just imagine this in this age, you know. But it's interesting that we never had any revolution or something, you know, war that we want internet. No, it's somehow it's very much mm, after the first week, it's very, very accepted, and uh, yeah, it's interesting that there is life behind, you know. <laughs> The, not behind, but in, instead of or, uh, how can I say not not uh, being uh, all the time online and in the virtual world, but uh, very so. So I think much more um, structured and much more intense the program there that than uh, in the in the adult rehab. But is my experience that that much more time can be I think uh, self-organized. Like, okay, you have half a day now, and then they, the people go to the library of the rehab or something like that, but in the teenage rehab, no. I mean, I will be very honest to you, if there is a not structured day, or just hours, can happen that few uh, months ago, they, <coughs> the, the youngsters killed cats, mm -hmm. because of the, yes, it's very hard to speak about, you will see the photos, no, not of this, but I mean, I like very much, the, I believe in the animal assisted therapy, so we have a dog therapy there and we go there for hippotherapy for horse riding with them. But when we realize that uh, it's uh, out of Budapest, about half an hour from here, the rehab, and from the village, there are always, you know, these street cats who are just walking. And these, some cats, oh, it's destiny, yeah, not like that. <laughs> But uh, they came to the rehab all very often, and the young, uh, youngsters wanted us to us to help with food, and they asked Timmy, "Can we feed them?" And we said, and "Not only me, but my colleagues." And depends on the on the <coughs> behavior of my colleagues, you know, who like cats. Some people hate hate cats. Uh, they just uh, we just let them to a little bit to host these and all all uh, ability. So they just need some handkerchief. Maybe not because of that, I hope I will not cry, but maybe it can happen. <laughs> so, okay, I don't want to go deeper, but yes, it happened, excuse me, that uh, <coughs> only, excuse me, only the, on Sunday, officially on Sunday, the, the young people have uh, absolutely free time, free hours, without you know, any organized program, and they, they they disappeared a little bit. It's a very, very uh, huge uh, uh, territorium of, of the rehab, and uh, at late they, they realized what happened. That some, you know, cats disappeared, and they had this uh, this uh, cruel behavior. Some of them, not everyone, and we had to uh, close them out of the program because, first of all, it's a criminal case in Hungary already, but. Uh, Otherwise, the, the method of and the thinking of the therapeutic community we, is not to call, we don't call the police and uh, in any other case, I mean, you know, I think that on this field, 
if uh, we should call the police that in Megalo is a low threshold system, so if someone is coming in with uh, drugs in the pocket and we will not call the police, we ask kind that, okay, please come back tomorrow without <laughs> weed in your pockets or something like that. So also, in, we didn't uh, make a criminal uh, case of it, but uh, what we do, we try to prevent in the future to make things happen like that and to to, to teach or to, to change somehow the, the thinking and the, the yes this mental condition about uh, about about how to behave with, with smaller things than me I mean not animals but because you know very well it's not not only at first maybe it's against animals but it can uh, later it can be against human also so. It's a new task, that's why I, uh, I didn't know I will mention it, I didn't plan that I will mention, but it's very, very honest that uh, how we structure the day, it's uh, very much connected with, uh, if they, they have boring time or empty, uh, empty time, then it can be dangerous. And uh, this is a little bit about the stuff I already mentioned. And... How do the young people come to you? Are they voluntary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I oh. just oh. I jump back to this question because it's not not that and it's not possible. But after that, I prefer to go. Mm -hmm. It's not my text. And uh, yes, there are some beautiful books. Ah, no, this is already my picture. Yesterday I made some. I wanted to. Anyway, if I will speak, that just as a background, okay, just to see <coughs> for you. You are see, I'm not fan of it a bit, as, uh, because of my because of my my addiction background. I, I lost uh, two. I mean, I had two abortion during my my addiction, and I, I do not have children, but I always adopt uh, <coughs> dogs, and then these are my adopted dogs, and I hope they will be not. Uh, uh, how bantam you? Abuse or or yeah, by, by the guy. So I try to teach it's not mandu, but I try to, to teach to teach but just to be together with the guys in the real they are on the sessions very often and uh, and feel really good there and I I really have this vision and I believe still that it can happen with not not every young young person there will be cruel to animals, of course not. So, about the voluntary or voluntary base of uh, of joining the program, of course, uh, it is. But uh, I mean, the, we always say that the door is open both sides, so mm -hmm. young people can come in and they can leave any time the program. But uh, of course, very often, I mean, from from ten youngsters, eight. Comes uh, come there without any motivation, mm -hmm. but because the family forced them, or the or the social care system already, or they have already uh, case uh, criminal case. Mm -hmm. I mean, mainly. I don't know if did you uh, speak yesterday already about the alternative treatment in Magalo. So no, just you know this uh, because of the zero tolerance. If they are caught by police with small amount of uh, of marijuana or, or any other kind of yeah, 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 sorry, yes, diversion, not uh, alternative treatment. We call it alternative treatment, but it's diversion. So uh, they also can make it an indirect this program. But uh, but I can see it. So you know, it's like a bit grotesque to say that it's voluntary, mm -hmm. because the the method and the system is that to be voluntary. But but they have one million things why they fear that they must be there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's also an important question what you asked. That without the real mm -hmm. self motivation, that's why I think these kind of things can happen. Mm -hmm. So and now we can jump uh, to the to the everyday life a little bit that, for example, uh, now I see, <coughs> since I'm, I'm working there, for example, it's impossible to, to be like in Megalo that it's uh, the employment program. 
it's uh, you know that these the, the young people here, young or middle age, uh, cleaning the house and they, the the chemical things are not you know hidden or something like that. And in the rehab, in this three and a half year, we just uh, realized that we really everything uh, they can make and BS about of everything, but really everything. So even new, but new, more new things than what was not already known, you know, by the police or something like that. So it's also very, <laughs> they are very, very creative in, in a way. And uh, yeah, sometimes I really <coughs> didn't know that that we should we should aware <coughs> of of, uh, of using any kind of home, you know, the kind of class for cleaning. I mean, and, and for painting and everything. Yeah, I just no. Peter mentioned about this uh, that they they smoke the the fuel from the grass. Uh, what is this washing grass cutter? Or I don't know how to say it. But I think it's all it's not something extreme. Example, you know that. Yeah. Half of it. So that is toxic, everyone knows. Okay, so uh, um, <coughs> time is now. Or may, can I ask you, may I ask you if you have questions, a little bit to, to, to give a frame now for, for my presentation. But really if, you, if something I didn't mention or just you, anything in your mind about the, the rehab, uh, you, uh, yeah. so, so sorry, uh, is that, uh, is your community mixed or uh, with women? And, no, uh, it's not co-educated, so it's only for boys, and it's a very huge, so shortly yes, a bit uh, about this, it's a very big uh, lack of, I mean, it's the, the system, all, of, all the treatment system in Hungary mm -hmm. that for adolescents, there are only male centers now, mm -hmm. and in Budapest there is one, uh, Catholic center, which uh, officially said that open for girls, which is under but as I know. But, but uh, I don't have any statistics. Okay, maybe you know they have girls or not? Because so it's it's I think yes, it's very very important. This is the big task, not big task for the future. Is, in Croatia, yeah. is it the same? Yeah. So what's happening? Okay, what's happening to the addicted girls? Yeah. Good question. Mm. Yeah, parents parents are yeah. calling. So it's in procedure already, already in process, because uh, what there is a uh, free teenage center in Hungary, and uh, this center was a second one. There is one in, in South Hungary, close to the Serbian border in Seged, or Sajmas, it's very close to, to Seged, and uh, they are. Uh, <coughs> They got, as I know, the permission permission to to host girls, but I don't know why the program didn't start. And I feel ashamed, as also as an as an ex addict and also as a social worker, that when parents call, I, I say on the phone that oh sorry we host only boys. I'm very sorry as a professional. I don't know when we when can we say to you that that there will be center for girls. Our uh, this Christian background, they they try to. So this is planned to open a center for uh, for girls, but uh, I really it's, it's like uh, I, I think by the by the system it's something like a shame. Mm -hmm. Even if I cannot say, you know, we don't have concrete answers why. So because uh, otherwise I don't know if you heard or somebody has any statistics. Maybe Obe, you know, I don't know. If there is statistics of, among the the users that uh, NPS users, that what about the gender? I mean, how many how many how many percent of uh, users are female or male? Do you have in your country some kind of general statistics is between the four men and the women? Mm -hmm. So I, I I I really don't don't know yet, but. I'm quite sure that in the near future, I mean, the, f the next uh, maximum two, three years, it must be solved because that will be some huge problem. <coughs> in Germany, we have both. We have uh, like some yeah. places for men, some for women, some mixed. Mm. Like yeah. We have a very a big problem with mix. Yes, but you speak about adult treatment. 
yeah. adult. Yeah. So that is important difference yeah, yeah. because of course we have mixed uh, adultery. Yeah, but now I speak ah. about the teenage, what the But we don't, don't have uh, as uh, adult and teenagers yeah. for women anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, in Germany we, we have also no. mixed. We have for, um, for the teenagers. teenagers. Yes. Yeah. We, we have uh, the metal which is coming from Canada. This metal what we use is called the Portage model. But and I have my flight ticket, but probably it will be cancelled in the April. I, got, I uh, was to go to Canada. So this portage model, and they have what we saw that they have uh, in the in the teenage we have in uh, nearby Montreal and on New Brunswick they they have uh, teenage rap for girls and boys, but they have very strictly interesting. I was not there; I was planned to go, but my colleagues were there, and they uh, can somehow manage the life very strictly. That on some group sessions that they are separately, of course, they said they uh, have accommodation or they sleep separately. And it, they said that it runs very well. I don't know. Me, myself, when I was in the rehab, it was also co-educated. So we were boys and girls together. And uh, I finished, luckily, my therapy. I'm an example. <laughs> I believe that it can happen. Because, of course, I was, uh, I, one time I, I thought I was falling in love in the rehab. But the power of the group, the community, was stronger. And they, you know the feedback what they gave to me. The team, do you think that now, in, from the world, the real, the big one is exactly here and now mm -hmm. in this center when you are in therapy. And I said, mm, maybe not. <laughs> exactly. So, and thank for this, uh, I think, really strong therapeutic, community therapeutic model. I, I believe, I trust, I had a very strong trust in the group and the feedback. And I finished my therapy, and that boy is now very happy and married another girl, and they have children, we have good contact, and it's, you know, and I live my own life, uh, sober life, so I think it can work, and of course, we know other examples when couples uh, go and they have their lives together. But in Croatia, there is no rehab center for teenagers at all. At all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there is some bigger problem, then we have to ask the ministry to allow us to have a younger than 18 uh, in our center, but there is no some house or something mm -hmm. where they are going to go. Yeah. Only in the hospital. It's also, also thank you for sharing because otherwise, yeah, I, I mean, I feel ashamed that we don't have center for girls, but otherwise thank God that we have free centers for, for boys and I hope, mm -hmm. hopefully we will have four girls. Do you have in Hungary centers for the whole family, if the um, parents or one part of the, the mother or the father is addicted? Um, is it possible to come together with your children? Yeah, he, he not, but we have you know, organizations who have this opportunity. And also the can in Canada, the, that model offers for this uh, kind of treatment, the children, mother with children, but, uh, but here we don't have. It's, I mean, I think it's, it's not the simplest way, but this, this center is for young boys and uh, and we have very strong uh, con connection with the families. Every second week they come for visit and every mentor has uh, individual uh, case management with mm -hmm. the families. And fam it's very rare when they are families because usually they are mothers or fathers or uh, or someone from the social care system. Just ask them. And do you have a different approach for treating like uh, young people with um, who consume NPS in, in different yeah. to like heroin or yeah Hi, heroin nobody no, I mean no, from no, them like, I mean yeah, it's something else so it's they all end. different so drugs because we had a guy and uh, he tried uh, heroin but it was just one example in this in the last three and a half year but uh, okay different we, drugs I understand this. we don't have. Uh, uh, what we okay the difference is now what we what we see and what we face is uh, about more than a half of the youngsters there now use only NPS mm -hmm. and a little bit less than the half said that no I will never use this shit they say mm -hmm. I just uh, because I just I, I smoke weed and nothing else mm -hmm. or maybe sometimes cocaine or sometimes what happened around me and I could use something but. Uh, what, what we see and what is the tendency that, that more than the half used uh, only NPS, mainly those youngsters who came from, uh, from villages because we host from all around Hungary, of course, young people, and they are 
from uh, yeah, I can say with fewer opportunities or disadvantage that runs and just financial reasons very often they use this and and those who come from uh, from I can say fine because only not mentally but financially good family background they they very often say that they know that the NPC is too dangerous and it's uh, and I, they prefer to use uh, weed or marijuana so if you say therapy sometimes it's uh, I don't know, I have, I, I have no concrete uh, definition for you, what I can say, but I think it's therapy in a teenager hub for me means a com complex program of learning or showing somehow, learning uh, life skills and to, to have the young personality to grow because they, I mean, it's, for me it's very, very different the individ individual case management than uh, that one what I had in Megalo for 15 years. Because these young people, often I feel I'm as, as a social worker that sometimes very strongly I cooperate with our psychologists because there are you know do topics which is not a task of a social worker or I'm not, not you know expert in that mm -hmm. case. So or in every Tuesday when we have the staff meeting it's the same like in, in Megalo. We we very, very strongly discuss in the case management the, the things with the, with our psychologist and also the psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just hope you mentioned that it's, uh, that's why it's not the most correct name that we call it rehab center because it's more habilitation and not rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. How long do they stay in your institution? Mm. Yes, it's also very, very, uh, very of uh, of the answers because uh, what we suggest and what we think people who work there that would be really nice is minimum half a year, but more nine months for 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 one year would be nice. But when they enter the program, very often they say that okay, I have um, let's say about three months maximum, and then I want it's summertime, so girls will have a short skirt. I want to go, uh, or the school will start. I want to study, uh, continue the the school because it's very important for me. The school suddenly, you know, and uh, so it's very rare that someone says that okay, I can say as long as you think as you suggest. Sometimes it happens. And we have good examples, so uh, those who stayed for nine months longer, one year, um, some of these young people, even sometimes they come here after the rehab to Megalo, and here they continue their, uh, the education program. And uh, also sometimes they start to work somewhere, or they go to an aftercare house somewhere. But what I see, and we have concrete numbers for that, and uh, my colleague who is responsible for the aftercare uh, meetings, uh, the, he, he said that almost uh, like something like 90% uh, cannot keep abstinence. Just, uh, but they can go to school, sometimes they also work, they have some kind of better relationship with the, with the family members, but uh, they are not abstinent. Mm -hmm. And who knows what will be later? So, yeah. And I don't know if in person. So excuse me that I cannot tell you how many percent we can say that stay really sober. It's very few. Yeah. Um, is it possible um, if um, one of your clients is quitting the therapy um, to come back, or if somebody has a relapse, is it possible to start again? Yeah. Almost everyone can come back, but we tried not to make a, like a, I call it rehab tourism, yes. you know. <laughs> uh, or, I mean, they can have rehab tourism in the other rehab, and they, they do, but, uh, but not uh, the same place. So we always protect the, the actual community as they are. And one thing which is not very um, yeah, strictly not accepted is it's written on the wall also that in Megalo, uh, aggression, aggression is forbidden, so we have the same verbal and physical aggression is not in any level is not accepted. So if in the last three and a half year, and since I'm working there, it was one time in this, which is not bad 
statistic, let's say, when it was not a big you know, fight or something, but one guy uh, hit on the face the other, and then we thought that for, uh, for minimum for the one year, we, we, he cannot come back, but we have to find other places if you want to go to another uh, rehab from the, from the two other, because we have only three for teenagers. But that is the main main thing. But someone who, who was bringing uh, into the rehab uh, drug and the new for me it was new system because it was in the battle of uh, shower gear. Yeah. Uh, so it's all style. <coughs> Maybe it's all style. But somehow it was made like the first and out of the shower gear, and then it was yeah, the, 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 the bead, and then the shower. Oh, yeah. Never mind. So, <laughs> the, but he, for example, after half a year, he could he could come back to the program, and uh, hopefully, he didn't know any new ways of bringing in. But what I think, me myself, that it's, if somebody wants to bring in drug, then he or she, he, not, not she, <laughs> but he will bring because the territory is very big, and if it's me, I will I don't know drop or hide away somewhere in the garden or something like that. So. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's not a question of one yeah. more question. Could you maybe tell a little bit about the motivational work you're doing at the beginning? Because for me it's yes. usually like this. If there are young people coming, my feeling is you have to explain a lot. Okay, this is our space. We're working here like yeah. this. And um, our idea is um, to do this. What is your idea? What is your motivation? And it's a lot about to keep the motivation of the patient, of the client um, to continue. Yeah, yeah very, very good. And thank you for your question. Because even I, I wrote for myself notes about it that uh, the four steps of uh, of the program when someone comes independently from how long the person will stay is uh, according the name is according to the star Wars uh, movie because the phase is for them is first is like first is not because it's a one week orientation phase mm -hmm. and in the, during this one week really they do not uh, have to make a lot of tasks or cleaning the you know house with the others but observe what's going on, what is this, do I want to stay here really or not? So it's like uh, one week for that and then the community uh, decides if at the end of the one week he has, he has a kind of little celebration or uh, ceremony and then the community with also with, uh, with uh, my colleagues we decide if the person can, can continue or not, usually they can and I mean I don't remember if someone couldn't you should, sometimes they got one more week of orientation and maximum two times they can you know repeat this if we see that really low motivation but he he doesn't uh, he cannot decide that okay I will finish because very often the parents uh, give a, how we say this uh, uh, when I mean if they give they say to the child that if you leave this center then you, you will have to go to social care mm -hmm. you cannot stay in, within the family anymore and it's uh, like a sword of Democles, we say, mm -hmm. uh, above them. And, uh, but you know, it's not enough. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can explain very well in English to you, but you know, if only this is the motivation that they must sit, stay because of the, the consequences, then it's not enough in therapy. And then maybe we will say that, sorry, but this is not a hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if, if, if we want a really strong therapeutic community, which is, I think, very difficult with, with teenagers, then, then they, they must have some, must grow kind of motivation in themselves. So the second uh, level is the, the young Padawan level, mm -hmm. when they learn from, the, from the, the guys who are longer time in therapy, and the longer time is the Jedi. And the, the top is the Jedi, Jedi Masters. Now we don't have Jedi Master, but soon we will have in the rehab. But, the, but the, we have three, no, two, sorry, two Jedis. And now it's, uh, we have ten youngsters. We, you didn't uh, ask and I didn't mention yet that we have placed officially for, th for 30 young people. But since I'm working there, we, we never had more than uh, 14. Usually, when it's 14, then the group uh, somehow will collapse. And the collapse, I mean that usually those bad things happen, like mm -hmm. this cat killing or something. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting for me that it's a big house and we really have empty rooms. But somehow the, 
the best what I think when we can deal with the, with the group is like 10 or 12 people. It's my experience and I know my colleagues say that, oh no, for sure we can have 20 and more and more. I'm 47, it's my opinion that, and my experience that if it's, it's really in a, in, a, in a more safe way we can deal with the group if it's, it's not more than, than 14 people or something like that. Uh, 12, sorry. So these four levels, why it's, they are important? Because the, the, young, the youngsters have, when already they decide, okay, I want to stay, then they can decide for how long, and maybe somebody will be Jedi in, a, I don't know, in one, in two months, but somebody is more, has a much more slow, you know, progress, and then that person will be Jedi just after three or four months. So everyone is in an individual, individual level, but they seriously like to, you know, to fight for these levels, and they, they receive cards, Jedi cards, if they, uh, for example, if they uh, have tasks from the mentor, I don't know, write your life story, you know, or different tasks, and also they have timetable and the, 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 the Teachers also because we have education program. The teachers observe the activation of on the on the lessons or something like that. And if they are good in something, they receive the card. And if they have free card, different uh, Jedi cards, then they can uh, go for this next level. And it's like you know, it's like really a ceremony or something like that. So this, um, no, I don't say childish, but this kind of. Uh, uh, young style motivation is, is very interesting for they like it a lot. So we have these Padawans and Jedi in the center. <laughs> and we don't have Darth Vader, but Darth Vader, I think <laughs> we have. Darth Vader sometimes is, uh, hi Thomas. I not, Darth Vader is not coming. <laughs> you are not Darth Vader, but you came in the right moment. So Darth Vader, I think, is flying about the. Uh, about this, uh, what I said, in this boring time, a uh, cloud above the rehab, and when sometimes, and I think <coughs> it's independent from us, that there are days and weeks which are very positive, and there are a lot of positive <coughs> happenings, and sometimes there are times when, you know, I think that I will have a, for example, it was on, on New Year Eve, in Sylvester night, and I said, oh my God, I was working alone, I said, what a good, amazing guys! It's you know one o'clock, New Year Eve. Everybody's going to sleep. I was so <laughs> happy. Nobody wanted to go out to use drugs. I said, Oh, what a place where I can work! I'm so grateful, really. And next, you know, two days later, I, I uh, heard from my colleagues why were they so silent mm. and sweet, <laughs> honey? Because they jumped, uh, climbed out on the windows at two o'clock. They were waiting that I will not hear. And they, first they wanted to go, to try to go to the village and uh, find some dealers because unfortunately we have also the uh, uh, drug uh, dealers. But they couldn't manage this story, so they climbed back to the rehab. And uh, then they, they found some of uh, poor cats who were killed. So that it can happen. And you know, I was really, really, I, I thought I had a satisfied, you know, and a very, very successful uh, uh, Sylvester or New Year Eve and uh, very great children and they were so sweet and so it happened. But I think it, it very nicely and honestly you know, express to you how uh, they can give some surprises in the everyday work and everyday life. So let me finish at this point <laughs> and then, because I, I think Agi, Peters, it's okay if... Yeah. So, any last question or something? How do you uh, react if you have doubts about somebody is consuming drugs but you can prove it? Yeah. That's an NPS problem. Yes, you can, I, I you can like test or prove that they are uh, taking ah, yeah, drugs, yeah, yeah, we have, yes. but you have doubts. You like uh, see a change of behavior, yeah. and you think maybe he is taking drugs, but you can prove it. How do you react? Yeah, the, the first important is always the reaction of the, the therapeutic community. So we sit together in a circle <coughs> and we discuss about the situation. I don't like very much this testing system, and as I know. Still, even the tests are, uh, you know, we cannot uh, prove, every, even if what they are doing or they did 
in the in our uh, uh, what is Mühei workshop. workshop room, but not in this way, but you know, there are technical stuff, I mean, these chemicals and fuel for the machines and room for for, technical you know, this wardrobe mm -hmm. house or something mm -hmm. like that. So even if it's locked on, I don't know how many locks, <laughs> but it's not, uh, they can they can make for themselves. Uh, maybe now, I think not, but I'm sure that they can find some ways how to produce new drugs. So what, according to your question, I think the most important, what uh, it's a very sen sensitive thing because you know depends also this person is uh, in the group dynamics. Where is his place? Mm -hmm. Because if is someone who is very much uh, accepted by the by the peers, then you know they will protect and they say oh, for sure not. Mm -hmm. He is no. He must stay. He is very good guy. We really don't kick him out. But if. Uh, if the person, if they want, and it very often it happens that someone they don't like, then they will say, Tim, look at his eyes and look what's going on, and for sure he's not sober. So it's always, uh, I think, a very sensitive, you know, uh, find the balance. Mm -hmm. and, and I, but I think everyone has the chance, and if we see that it's not a, you know, a group relapse somehow, because it also happened that three or four of them you were using together, then, uh, and we think that they can learn from the situation and very often they just uh, have a kind of uh, sense of, you know, that maybe I'm, really, maybe I'm addicted if I behave like that. And then according to what I said, that they have different uh, viewpoints about addictions or be addicted, then maybe we don't kick out the world or don't uh, say to the person that you must finish the therapy now, here and now. But if they don't admit that they are uh, taking drugs, if they deny uh, to take drugs, they, they have to go. You they have to go. No, but I, I think so I understood well that it's not, yes, this is the, yes, we have three main roles that don't use drugs in the house, don't, no aggression, mm -hmm. and no any kind of sexual, uh, no, I don't say abuse, but contact between each other. So the main, the three steps, but I think that this uh, about drug using is all in itself, it, it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. If they didn't bring in, I mean, it's not, you know, a common <coughs> drug, but they are do, producing there something or try to do something, then sometimes it happened. It's always individual decision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we said, yes, sorry, goodbye, we can mm -hmm. help you to find mm -hmm. another rehab. But it also happened when we said, okay, you got a chance, and then it was a very, from this uh, decision, it was a very, very concrete growing in the therapy, and uh, the motivation, you know, was uh, strengthened, and then the person had a very good uh, development. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always think, and in, in Megalo I learned very well, and also even uh, in Lawamichi, that uh, rules, let's say, and frames are for us. And if we <coughs> try to, so I don't believe in this black and white, you know, this kind of thing that rules, because always there are, I think, examples which, which show us that if we solve individually the case, then, then it, can, it can have a very good result, and fruitful result in the future. So, I but think, yes? <laughs> if you say you have to leave the therapy, you call the parents that they pick. Mm. Yeah. We must, if the person yeah. is under 18, then we, we must. We have to. Yes, we also. have to, and also we have, uh, in the when they come, we have, you know, this very strict contracts, mm -hmm. and they they have, the parents have minimum, uh, maximum six hours that they have to come for the child. Some of them sign a paper that we can put uh, the, the child on a train, and and depends, for example, if, is, uh, I don't know, 17 years, depends on the experience, because some of them have never been in Budapest or cannot travel alone, and some of them are very, you know, they can they can travel, and it's a question of how the family uh, is, and then they sign this paper, and then we have, and we, we move the person to the railway station, because we are out of town and out of village, so in the middle of nowhere, a little bit, so then we <coughs> somehow we care, so just because I think that really I would like to keep the time for Megalo staff to, to continue, but one thing which is my, 
I would like to mention, I believe in destiny, I'm a fatalist person, that today morning when I, this beautiful Facebook dropped a photo of me, uh, you know, but sometimes Facebook reminds you that, oh, the, it's a nice memory, and this memory was from Rekhina Van der Rucks when I made an amazing photo close to the sand that map and hope of, uh, there was a, like a village house, and behind the red windows there were chicken, and the chicken had that kind of house that they can look out on the window <laughs> when it was cold outside. I love that. So it's destiny. And then just welcome, Thomas. I'm very sad that you were not uh, here from the beginning, but I think, yeah, you know a lot about uh, when I, uh, I was, you know, talking. So thank you for your attention and the presentation. I think, if, yeah, I will, I will, I will leave further. Yeah. Yeah. Just these. Where are the young people's faces? And yeah. well, I think I try to choose photos where it's not, you know, mm -hmm. you don't see exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. I hope thank you.